does the evidence seem to point towards the cave as being where this virus originated from? Um, and that that she then generated SARS-2 from something she found in that cave? Yes. Um, un under the lab escape hypothesis, we have no, well, we have no evidence anyway that SARS-2 was ever inside a bat. In other words, it could be a totally artificial virus. Now, if it is a totally artificial virus, the way it would have been created is uh, just the way we see from her previous published experiments with uh, Ralph Barak. She would have taken the backbone of one coronavirus and she would have inserted into it the spike proteins uh, from various other coronaviruses. So the spike proteins are very important because they, they define what kind of host the virus will attack. And so one of these, one of these viruses she, she had created, they probably all used the backbones from the, from the, 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 the cave we discussed. Um, and, and she would have spliced different spike protein genes into them and one of them probably, or very possibly, was the SARS-2 virus. How common are lab escapes? How, how common do viruses get out of labs? They are much more common than we realize. Uh, yeah, they're kind of horrifyingly um, common. There's about one, one or two escapes a, a year that we know of, and maybe others that don't get reported. Um, so even the smallpox virus um, which is one of the most deadly pathogens you can think of escaped from labs in England uh, in the in the 1970s. More recently, the SARS-1 virus, um, that's in 2003, um, escaped four times from the Beijing Institute of Virology. Um, it's a it's a real hard virus to right. contain. I should be asking you what hasn't escaped then. The, uh, the yes. Wuhan Institute of Virology, it says, has a new BSL4 lab which I understand that's that's like the, one of the top security labs in terms of locking down virus, but its state of readiness considerably alarmed the State Department inspectors who visited it from the Beijing embassy in 2018. Um, it didn't have appropriately trained technicians uh, and investigators to operate a high containment laboratory. And as a result, probably a lot of scientists in China didn't want to work in that lab because it's also very uncomfortable to work in those uh, in how would you describe it in you know you the full suit very restrictive uncomfortable physically uncomfortable labs oh, right virologists really don't like working in 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 bsl4 um, conditions and uh, and uh, as you say the 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 people the state department guys who inspected the wuhan institute of virology bs4 lab found lots of deficiencies however in a way that's all beside the point because Dr. Xi did not do any of her work in BSL-4 conditions. Uh, they were all done in, in, in BSL-2 and 3. So uh, BSL-2 is, is really almost nothing. It's very, very minimal safety conditions. Basically, you put up a sign saying biohazard, and, and you try and remember not to suck up fr fluids through a pipette, as virologists like to do. That's it. it, it it's, it's hard to, it, it's the level of a, of a dentist's waiting office uh, 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 in one description. You're kidding me. Not a waiting office. It's just a dentist's office in the US will follow BSL-2 safety guidelines.